I used to write songs and then when I stopped playing music I just think I needed another way to express myself. But the woodwork was kind of a coincidence. I remember it was a summer around 2012 and I was in my dad's summer house and it was raining and I was really bored. And he had this woodwork shop outside in the barn. And I just went in there and started making sculpture out of his offcuts. So in the start, the sculptures were really primitive, but it just gave me so much joy. I'd always been attracted to the woodwork shops, but never really knew what to do in there and what to make. So when I found my own way to be creative with wood, it was just happiness. Well, for me, it's just a way of expressing myself. Sculpture provides a different way of experiencing art because sometimes you can walk around it or it sort of has a body. So you have to use your brain in a little bit different way than, for instance, looking at a picture. I kind of grew up with wood and the smell of sawdust because my dad was a carpenter. So wood is like family, it's like being home and I'm just familiar with it but also always learning more about woodwork from my dad. In the start I used to have his offcuts but then he retired so now I've gotten really good at finding leftovers here and there and then I got really busy and I started buying some wood as well, mostly pine from Sweden or other light types of wood because when it's hanging on the wall it can't be too heavy. Right now I have a deal with the University of Copenhagen, they have a wood workshop just down the road from me and I go there and collect their offcuts sometimes because I am thinking sustainable. In the start I was very inspired by the different shapes of the offcuts I had. I didn't really change them. But then it evolved and I really got into the woodworking machines and experimenting, cutting out different shapes. And that's what I do now. I always start by cutting the shapes and then fitting them together almost like a puzzle. And sometimes I have an idea for a final expression and sometimes I just work intuitively and let it happen. I think I'm 50% sustainable because it's only about half the materials I use that are either reused remnants or offcuts. But the question is, when is it really sustainable? Because if the design lasts for decades and brings you lots of joy, I think it is sustainable. And on the other hand, if the design is really bad, but the materials are organic, etc., well, people might not want it anyway because of the crappy design. And then it has no life and that's not very sustainable. Well, I'm a woman, that's a start. Feminism is about equality. Social, economic and political equality between the sexes. And I was brought up by a strong woman, a feminist, I guess, and I was always made aware of the injustice in the world, especially towards poor people and towards women. And we're not equal, men and women, not yet. In Denmark we may think we are, but we still don't have equal pay for the same work. Women are still doing most of the housework for free. So-called female values are looked down upon, female leaders are still a minority, etc. And I could go on. I mean, women are called the weaker sex for God's sake. And that's just so wrong. 
women are very strong. And I think that women's liberation is not just for women. We need all the men to fight for us as well, side by side, because women's liberation is good for everyone. I think I just need to feel free and feel that I have equal possibilities as a man. And I want my son to be free with equal possibilities as a woman. And I'm ready to fight for it. I'm actually educated in embroidery And I just love old traditional handcraft, especially needlework, because it has a tradition and a history connected directly and primarily to women. It kind of represents a mix of necessity and a freedom of expression. I just think it's beautiful and very aesthetic. Sometimes I use vintage lingerie as canvas, perhaps to underline the female aspect of it. And I also do a lot of application and quilts. It's a different way of telling a story, but the process is still like painting or writing a song. Textile is soft on the hands. It's the perfect opposition to wood. Primarily, I think I just use what I have and not limit myself. I use the materials I have at hand, my skills, and I use my thoughts. Thoughts about coexistence and love and life. The upholstery series was primarily thoughts. This one is called Three on a Straight Line. I wanted to comment on our need for perfection and the box we all think we have to fit into somehow. But most of us don't fit into this box, you know. And the pink piece is called distraction. The white piece is called you, me and everyone else. It's just about, it's a feeling of love floating in the space with this other person. And all the others are in a straight line, all sorted out. And then there is this crazy floating of love completely out of control.